Ed DePeters can't sit still. If he's not on campus by 6.30 in the morning, he considers himself late. And if you plan on conducting a sit-down interview with him, forget it. He's always on the move. His first stop is the animal science break room. Every day he makes coffee for the students, staff, and faculty. The cheapest coffee on campus, 20 cents a cup. Hot, black, cheap, and so far no one's died. If there are 10 seconds to spare, why stay in the coffee room? Ed walks down the hallway to his faculty office and turns on the computer. Whoa, yep. did you see that? Do you want to see it again? Well, not according to his daughter, Lee. Oh, let's not even go there. But Animal Science Department Chair Mary Delaney thinks it's worth a try. I hope you get in there. I don't know how you will with a setup and a camera, but I think you should give it a scan. How would you describe this? Um, remarkable. It's a wreck. <laughs> His office is a complete wreck. Hi, Mary. After walking back down the hallway to turn on the copy machines, a job he says is his to do, he's off yeah, to the dairy, all of this before 7 a.m. I was raising a farm, always up early. It's here where Ed DePeters begins to enjoy life. I definitely write better in the morning. I think I think better in the morning. End of the day, I'm not, a, I'm not an end of the day person. When he is in the midst of conducting scientific trials, Ed is at the dairy every day, and he is always teaching students something about cows. The contractions in the room and break that down. Look at the papillae when you go in there and feel. When we feed diets, we're going to talk about feeding grain and forage for papillae development. Growing up on a farm in upstate New York, Ed is comfortable and confident around dairy cows that weigh more than 1,500 pounds. And the trick is not to get kicked. Perhaps no one knows Ed's commitment to his work better than his wife, Sue, and their two children, Lee and Mark. Fifteen years of his um, career, he never took a vacation. He did not take a vacation. He worked straight through the whole year, never took any time off. His work is his passion and is his hobby. I, I, don't, know how, I don't know how to say no. I know that people tell me that I don't know how to say no. But, you know, you have to be put in a situation like I am, when students come up to ask you things. He doesn't say no. <laughs> there is no no in his vocabulary when it comes to teaching or when it comes to committee work. And I found that out when I became chair in 2005. I realized I had put him on nine committees and I asked him which departmental committees, which ones he wanted off of. And he said, none, leave me on all of them. And I have to be honest in that I couldn't do it without family support. If I didn't have my wife, Sue, or or Mark or Lee as my cheerleaders in the background, I couldn't do that. Mark says his dad is all or nothing. His father was his little league baseball coach for years. I asked Mark if his dad was hard on him as a player. Yeah, I mean, I had to play sick. There was no excuse for not trying. I mean, and I, and I look back at it and that's how I, I want my workers to work now, you know, all or nothing because you're wasting time. You're not out there giving your, you know, your full heart and everything. So that's what I've learned from him. Ed also taught his kids to drink hard. Milk, that is. We drank tons of milk as children. Um, I drink it to this day like I drink water. He actually finds fault with the fact that I drink the fat-free milk because he studies all the good uh, sources of fat that come in milk. Ed's dedication to the teaching mission has been his primary focus. Neil Van Alphen, Dean of the College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences, says Ed brings something special. Ed is absolutely sincere and his honesty and sincerity is what comes through as you're working with Ed and as you're interacting with him. And that, that resonates extremely well with, with students and with, other, with his colleagues. Lisa Nash Holmes, who earned her undergraduate and graduate degrees from UC Davis Animal Science Department, paid the highest compliment to Ed DePeters. Every parent will want their child when they come to go to college to meet an Ed DePeters once in their, at least once in their academic career. And that is so true. You do. I mean, I'm so glad I did. I know my parents are glad I did. Earlier this spring, as students were listening intently to Professor DePeters talk about dietary lipids for ruminants, in walked Chancellor Larry Vanderhoof with a number of other UC Davis campus dignitaries. 
The reason? To announce that this professor won this year's UC Davis Prize for undergraduate teaching and scholarly achievement. The $40,000 cash prize created by donors and the UC Davis Foundation was announced along with cake and, of course, milk. Vanderhoof said one characteristic that stands out is the professor's concern for students. He really cares about them. They don't feel like a number. He knows all of these people by their first names, and uh, he, really, he really does care. The day DePeters received this award was a day he won't forget. One of the best things, other than seeing my children being born or marrying my wife, was that day in the classroom with the students getting that award. My undergraduate students are what makes my job so much fun and so rewarding. And, you know, I still have the same excitement when I come to class. I'm still nervous, but I still have the same <laughs> excitement when I come to class now as I did the first day I came to UC Davis to lecture. To me, I'll always remember that. That was really precious. Mary Delaney says Ed is reflective of the very best of UC Davis faculty. She's thankful the campus recognizes these gifted professors. What a remarkable gift that the foundation uh, year in and year out is giving to all levels of campus and it spurs people on. It will spur those students on. It spurs my faculty on. Um, it's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful gift. To Peter's passion and commitment to teaching are reflected in comments received from students. He is consistently rated an excellent instructor in both small and large classes. This is a class you want to come to every day. It's not a lecture that you have to go to. He really goes out of his way to make it interesting. He's always available to students. He's definitely one of the best professors I've ever had. So today we're going to talk about raising calves and heifers. If you have spent any time at the Campus Arboretum, you might have seen Ed walking the trails and talking to himself. In a recent survey by the National Animal Health Monitoring System. Before every lecture class, Ed walks the Arboretum practicing out loud his talking points. But once in the classroom, this professor peppers his lectures with demonstrations, discussions, and a bag full of miscellaneous stuff that dairy science students need to know about, like this obstetric pulling chain for calf births. Ed doesn't own a cell phone or a wristwatch, so the only way he keeps track of time in the classroom is to bring his wind-up cow clock. <laughs> in Jaffa, Missouri, women are not allowed to knit and milk a cow at the same time. Even his daughter, Lee, took one of her father's undergraduate animal science courses when she was a student here. It was fun. It was um, early morning class. Um, he would ask for feedback a lot, which is cute. Um, to ask if I ever got bored or anything like that. He's really concerned about, you know, being animated and uh, well-received. So why didn't Lee follow in her father's footsteps? Probably the stench. <laughs> like, he constantly smells like cow manure. <laughs> I'm serious. I, I mean, and you don't forget what that smells like. It's like, is it not ingrained? You no. know, I mean, swine, like pigs are different, not, but cows, just has it's that pretty smell. pugnant. Yeah, that's not really the reason, but that's part of it. <laughs> Come on. Hey, girl. In Ed's world, the cows are the stars and they are treated that way. The cows at the UC Davis dairy get what they need in order to keep the milk flowing. Without a well-balanced diet, comfortable surroundings, rest and medical care, cows won't be at their best. They won't produce milk the way they should. So California dairy operators rely on the nutritional research of Ed DePeters. He has done some in incredibly groundbreaking research in how to affect the, the composition of milk by affecting the diet, of, by changing the diet of the, uh, of, the, of the cow. He is an experimental scientist for sure. Uh, he's uh, a classic in that he asks a question, um, generates a hypothesis and a good experimental plan to come up with data that can be useful and applied. Fellow faculty member Jim Fadel says Ed's research is critical to the future of the dairy industry. There's two different types of fatty acids, omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6 fatty acids, and he's able to change the uh, composition of those fatty acids in the milk, and that's human health benefits. And that could be very important in the future. I'm not as good in the lab as I am with the animals. Hey! The only place to snag Ed for an interview is his home away from home, the dairy. For me, I, I really love what I do. So my, my joy and my motivation comes from doing the things for the students. The students really get me excited. My problem is slowing down. I know I talk fast, but I get so enthused when I go to class that they're the ones that really fire me up to do what I want to do. I really enjoy the students. It's important to know how to milk the cows, 
but the why is really important because that's why they're going to hire you. Because when there's a problem, a quality problem, you're going to have to go out and troubleshoot. He says the majority of animal science students want to go on to veterinary school, but he lets them know about the professional opportunities available to them in large animal nutrition. You know, there's opportunities working in nutrition as a private consultant, working with feed companies, pharmaceutical companies, but the students have to be well trained. They have to know how to do things and why things are done. Because I think our students are hired for the most part for the why. Going out and working on a dairy uh, or working in a feed mill, you have to know why you do things. How to do it, you know, you can teach somebody pretty quickly how to run a tractor and a mixer wagon. The why is the tough part. Driving students to commercial dairies is a regular event for DePeters. Here in Lodi at Lean to Snares Milking Operation, students ask questions that range from how dairies manage their production streams to the nutritional requirements of calves. Students would often break off and have a quick side conversation with their professor. So in case something ever happens with um, BSC, mad cow, This self-effacing man is devoted to his students, his research, and of course, his cows. He is a man of simple needs. I have no clue what I'm paid. I get my paycheck in terms of getting a direct deposit, and you know, as long as I have a pair of blue jeans and a clean shirt in the morning, I don't care. Hands in, sanitize your hands in. What he does care deeply about is picnic day. Ed, Jim Fadel, and the entire animal science faculty and staff turn out for this annual open house. I think most people come on picnic day, most people want to come and touch an animal. That's true. The, the fun of it is to come and get that personal contact. Please. Perfect. We're going to hire you. <laughs> After 30 years of teaching and spending countless hours in the lab and at the dairy, is Ed thinking about retiring? Probably not. <laughs> That's his love, I mean. Yeah. I would, I would be sad for him actually. I mean, it's, it's his big passion, and I mean. And, and fortunately for Ed, there's not a mandatory retirement yeah. age here. <laughs> there's no question that Professor Ed DePeters is extraordinary in his research and teaching. His enthusiasm oh, is unmatched in the classroom, wow. and his devotion for his animals is only surpassed by his love for his family. I still remember growing up, and I remember through life, is what Lou Gehrig said in one of his, one of his statements. And for me, what he said was, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. And that's, that's how I feel in my job. And I'm so pleased to get an award for something I love to do. So I thank everyone here and I thank the students and all the former students for everything you've done because you've made my life fantastic. Thank you.